All right, all right. What's up, guys? So I had to come on here real quick and let you guys know that I just got done reading the Shadow and Bone trilogy from Lee Bardugo. Also, I was able to see the series early that releases this Friday, April 23rd. But out of all of this, there was one other thing that I got, which was some damn Grisha powers. Now, hold on, before you say anything, I know you don't believe me, so I'm gonna show you real quick. Check this shit out. Check it out, you see, you see that? Yeah, watch this, watch this. Whoa, 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 hold on. Oh, I'm losing it. Shit. Well, I also forgot to mention I'm still training, so give me a break. Shadow and Bone, a Netflix fantasy series created by Eric Heiser and based on the popular young adult novels by Lee Bardugo. And I must say, it was a pleasant surprise to see that Eric Heiser was leading this project because I usually have a tendency to gravitate towards projects he has a hand in, like Arrival, uh, Bird Box, and probably one of my favorites, the 2011 The Thing sequel. And the series stars, and my apologies in advance if I butcher any of these names, uh, Jesse Mee Lee as Alina Starkov, Archie Reno as Malian Oretsa, Ben Barnes as General Kerrigan, aka The Darkling from the books, and Freddie Carter as Kaz Brecker. So Shadow and Bone follows two orphans, Alina and Mal, but when Alina discovers she has a unique power that's been believed to be a myth, now she's faced with the life-altering responsibility of destroying an evil darkness that plagues her country, all while trying to do a little soul searching and pursuing a future with Mal, the man she loves. All right, there is so much to unpack here, especially for someone like myself who has just completed the Shadow and Bone trilogy, also alongside the Six of Crows duology. And going into this series as sort of a new fan with fresh knowledge of the source material actually made the viewing experience pretty fun. I actually haven't covered a movie movie or film adaptation from a book for the you know review in a while but covering the source material beforehand before getting into this show made it a lot more thought provoking and intriguing now for all the og fans of the books just as a heads up this series is not planning to stick to the script that the source material laid out there were a lot of changes that were made to modernize the story and characters even a lot of the characters mannerisms and nuances seem to be slightly different from how they were depicted in the books but the series has been described by the creators as an alternate story timeline slash prequel for the six of crows timeline Timeline. And after now seeing the route they chose, I was very satisfied with the outcome. Everything from the costume design to the locations they chose, and one of my favorites, which was the music, made me feel like the books were really being brought to life. Getting to see a lot of these well-known locations like areas of Ravka and Ketterdam was really awesome, especially Ketterdam with the dark, eerie, steampunk type of look. But with that said, I did notice that they had to sort of rush through a lot. Now, although there were a lot of signature moments moments from the books that were actually added in the series, they kind of felt like they were thrown in at times just to sort of pay homage really quickly to the fans of the books and then sort of get on with the story. Also at times it felt like they sort of struggled a bit with finding a sweet spot for the pacing in the series. And the series having eight episodes may have played a role in that, but I'm not sure. And there isn't really a trade-off there where although there's less episodes in the season, the episodes are longer. Instead, the episodes all roughly land around an hour long which was honestly fine for me but like i said it just felt like there was a slight pacing issue maybe for someone who's a fan of the books uh, but i don't think that this is something that would bother someone who is new to the series though but now that i've brought that up i'd actually like to touch on that real quick too i kind of want to talk about moments in the series that will probably make more sense to fans of the books versus newcomers who are watching this show for the first time and i could be completely wrong about this by the way so after you check out this 
series when it releases this Friday. Make sure to come back to the video and let me know your thoughts on this. There were moments that happened in the show where I was like, man, if I hadn't read the books, I don't think I really would have understood what just happened in that scene. And I got this feeling during moments that I would consider to be pretty important or somewhat important moments in the story. And as I've already mentioned, I could be completely wrong about this. Uh, if anyone who's a fan of the books, once you finally see the series and it releases and you don't really get that vibe from it, then I've I probably was just tripping about it. Also, I have to give them props on how well they intertwine different character interactions in the show between characters that actually never meet in the books. I think as a fan, readers have probably imagined what it would be like if certain characters actually had a run in with each other. And in the show, we get to see what that looks like. So I'm giving Shadow and Bone an 8.5 out of 10. Although I felt like I cared more about the characters the way they were depicted in the books versus the series, I think they are slowly finding a nice stride to move the story forward into a season 2 and really get into some deeper mythology behind the series. And I have to say that the way season 1 ends actually gave me chills. And I'm talking about specifically like the last 30 seconds of the show, right before the credits roll. I really don't think newcomers will really understand what's happening. And this kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier about newcomers. You're not really going to understand certain scenes, but with this particular scene, you're going to understand the gist of it. But I think OG fans of the books are really going to get excited when they see this scene because you know what it means. I mean, I think you guys are really going to love this shit. Uh, I mean, even the scene itself just looks cool as hell, the way it's shot. But, you know, I'll leave it where it is. There you have it. If you enjoyed the content, you know what to do. Thank you for watching.